We have a new, brand new member to One Million Cups. She's just less than a week old. Number nine, uh, they were here last week. She had her baby this week, little nice. Effie. She's, she's fighting. She's, she's <laughs> tiny and beautiful and doing great. She's still in the hospital. But um, And having said that, I would like to introduce uh, John Seward. He is with Assurance Consulting and Testing Solutions. I want to make sure I got all the words right. And John and I were talking. I saw this last night on, um, I guess, on Facebook. And I looked and I was like, don't I know him? And then this morning he said, didn't we used to go to networking together in Evansville? So see, you just never know what this is going to happen. So tell us more about what you do. All right. Oh. Well, thank you. Um, I guess I will start off a little bit about uh, how I got started and really came to this field. Uh, first off, uh, when I graduated high school, I went to college in UK. My second year in college, uh, I came home one summer um, and a friend of mine, a businessman, started a, uh, an upstart business in the medical field. And that's something that I actually wanted to go into. Uh, he said, hey, you know, you know, we're an upstart company, this and that. He said, I can offer you $30,000 right now to come work for me. And I said, wow, you know, that's a lot of money. I'm only 21 years old. So I decided, I said, hey, I'll take a risk and I always go back to college, I'll do it. Started as an entry level technician working in surgery rooms, went from that point to actually running the uh, uh, laparoscopic division at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. So I just took something and ran with it. Well, by the end of my career, it got to a point to where I was doing the exact same thing each and every day, working in New York City. It was very, very stressful to say the least. Um, my high school sweetheart and I were looking to get married. She is a teacher and she is about to move to New York City, so I was moving back. As I did, I just decided that, or the company decided I had to take a demotion, of course, because they can't pay me the same amount of money they're paying in New York. I got to dinner with a friend of mine who was plant manager of Columbia Sportswear. And he said, maybe you should try something different. Maybe you should come work for me. For me. So we were talking, and during that conversation, he said, uh, you won't believe what happened to us last night. We had an accident at the plant. You know, we had to get the individual drug and alcohol tested. Well, what they did was their policy was the supervisor had to write up their paperwork, get the individual off the floor, take a company vehicle, transport the individual actually to Trover, when it was Trover then, take it to Trover Hospital, and go to the yard. So from Columbia Sportswear in Roberts, Kentucky, all the way here to Trumper. That's the only avenue they had, or they thought it was the quickest. He said, combined in all, it cost them $475 to get a urine drug trip. $475. That's soft cost and hard cost, that's everything involved. So right then and there, I said, that's an idea. Something, there's something missing there that a company has to do that. So from that point forward, assurance had it. Uh, Matt is actually now a 10% owner in my company. So what do we do? Um, we saw a niche there, or I saw a niche there, and I said, you know, this is something that we can do. So what we offer, yes, you can go get a drug test at any local clinic or hospital or anything like that. And a lot of businesses offer a lot of the same services, but to what level, to what degree? We give you the Cadillac of services, if you will, and I think the reason we do is because we stay with one service. I'm not looking to branch out and I'll offer you this and I'll offer you this and this and this. We do one service and we do it very, very well. So you can actually call our company at any time, day or night, 24 hours, seven days a week, and you will have a trained technician on site at your company in under two hours in under two hours. Can't get that from a clinic, can't get that from a hospital or anything else. And it's because that's not what they do, okay? This is all we do. We handle drug and alcohol testing, and really for our corporate individuals, is really the majority of who we work with. Do we work with individuals? Yes, we do. Especially from the standpoint, uh, we like to help out families that might have um, you know, a kid that might be struggling or anything else. We make sure what we do with that individual is we'll bring them into the office. Uh, we'll kind of talk them through how to use a drug testing kit, 
what signs and symptoms to look for, things like that, that we see and what uh, drugs and alcohol are trending. Uh, so those are some things we get to do as well. Uh, also, we do not have any of our companies uh, sign a or, or an agreement, if you will, or a contract. Everything is a service agreement based upon pricing. That's it. <coughs> you use our service as you want to use it. So, so many companies go in and try and sell something and push something on individuals, and next thing you know, you're in a contract and you've got to use them for everything. We tell our customers you don't have to do that. You use our service for what's most convenient for you. So especially a corporate client, they might say, hey, my individual needs a physical, a drug screen, uh, a respiratory fit test, all of these things. I don't do all of that. So what's best for you at that point might be for a pre-employment drug screen and everything, get it all done at your local clinic. Go ahead, that's fine. But when you need a random drug screen, or you need post-accident drug screen, or maybe you have a mass hiring or something like that, give us a call. That's more convenient for you. That's, that's how you should utilize our service. So I don't ever want to go into anyone or any company and tell them, you need to use us full-blown for, for everything. I can contract everything out. I can call a million different people and contract and make some money on somebody, but that's kind of not what, not what we're in the business for. <coughs> some things I'd like to go into uh, and kind of get off of the company would be, I don't know, how many of you have you started a business or owned a business? Okay. Uh, this is just me personally, but this is kind of what I ran into. So I had never started a business before. Um, I, I really didn't know how to start a business, uh, but I am what you might call a risk taker. I don't mind to take any risk whatsoever. The biggest roadblock I have found is cash. Cash, cash, cash. Thank you for that. Uh, and the reason being is, is, is from the standpoint of one, underestimating how much it takes to start your business, okay, and allow it to sustain, but two, is now enough cash to make, to make your next growth step. So it's not just to start, but now all of a sudden you've gotten big enough to where you've got to take another step. And when that happens, you've got to have more cash available. And so when you first started, this is the biggest, the biggest mistake I made was when I would tell my uh, clients, I'd go in, sell them this service, everything, I'm so, you know, uh, you know, happy about it, this and that, and I won't bill you till the first of every month. Lord, corporate America doesn't pay for 90 or 120 times. <laughs> but, I, you know, so here I am, I'm selling these contracts and this and that, and everybody's signing these agreements, this sounds great. Next thing you know, I look six months later, I said, I'm broke. And I couldn't figure out why. So what did I do? I went, I talked to an accountant, I went and talked to another business person. So long story short is, is make sure and, and really invest in other people. You know, really go and talk to others, understand, especially individuals that may have started a business or anything else, what roadblocks they bring into. This is why this is so great, uh, to understand what they had to go, overcome to be able to be successful in their, in their business. So that was the first thing. Now we build weekly. We're large enough that we don't have to build every single day. If I put that on my office manager, she'd kill me. So we build weekly. So every Monday, everybody's invoice out. So it's a little bit different now. Um, the second thing is that I that really got me was I wasn't starting a business to get rich. And, and what I mean by that is if you're starting a business to make money that's monetary and eventually I think that's something that will run its course. You can never get enough. If that's what you're looking for, if that's your goal, you can never have enough. So then why are you starting a business? Why are you in your career? And so that, those are the things that I had to also ask myself. And to me personally, it's just about relationships. It gives me an opportunity to do something like this, to talk to people, to invest in others, to give certain people that, uh, in, in my case, uh, individuals get to work from their home, and when they're called out, then they get to go and they do their drug screens, things are scheduled. So it allows people that might be retired, that uh, you know may have a disability even, that I hire, P 
people that have an opportunity to work, whereas they may not be able to do that in a certain other area of standing on their feet for eight hours a day or working 20 hours a week of, of doing something else. They can actually work from their home and then be able to work on their time. So it makes it a lot more convenient for them. One other thing when we talk about money, I guess what I, uh, what I kind of messed up was budget for twice as much as you think you need. Budget for twice as much as you think you need. I thought I needed a certain amount and I was dead wrong. And the reason I was wrong was I, I didn't really factor in my living expenses of starting a, a company, of what it was going to take and how long it was going to take before I could actually pay myself. And I'm still to the point now to where I still you know, want to make sure, because we're going through a large, large growth phase right now, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, to where some of my employees, I make, they, pay, they make more than I do. I mean, they make more than I do right now, and, and there's a reason for that. The biggest reason is, is they do all the hard work. Okay. Okay. For questions. Okay. You questions. Are. Okay. Go ahead. Tell us some more. What? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a question? No, that that two two questions. Questions. I, 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 I just I got a few different points, and then we go. Go ahead and wrap up. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, one thing I was not good at at first, and I am now a lot better at, is embrace silence in meetings. I think a lot of us have gotten to a point in technology era to where. Everybody has to, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an awkward pause. So you see a lot of speakers that go, um, a lot and things like that because they don't, want to, they, they don't want that awkward pause. So with that being said, or it's check my phone, or I've got an iPad in here or something else. Everybody's going technology driven. This is what I've taken to me. Because to me, eye contact, making sure and investing in the individual is what's most important, and then keeping your mouth shut. Because they're, who, they're important. Very important. And every relationship you invest in, to me, is very, very important. Because they may not sign a contract, but they may think about you three years down the road. There's many companies that I've talked to that three years later they signed them. So you just never know. Rate and volume. That was the biggest thing I was taught uh, from an investor, one of my investors, and he just died five months ago, uh, is rate and volume. What are you going to do, John? Are you going to charge them, or are you just going to get a bunch of them? <laughs> That's what he told us. That's what he said. That's well put. And he, he was, this guy was a multi, multi millionaire. Multi, many times over. And he invested in the company, saw me on the side of the street one day. We were two years old at this point. He says, hey, what are you up to now? And I told him, he says, I want in. Okay, how much you want? He said, I want 30%. So okay. Sold him 30%. He just died last year. Crazy. But we won't go into that. That's another part of the business. Uh, it's a buy sell agreement, but we won't go into that right now. But so, um, but that's what he told me. You're going to get a lot of them, you're going to charge them. Well, at first, I didn't do either. I, under, I undersold and undercharged. Why? Because I, I just wanted people to, to, to take it out here, 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 here. Instead, now it's gotten to the point to where I understand the value of what we bring in this service. I'm not overcharging. No, we're charging at all. We give you something that nobody else can give, and we give it at a great, we just give a great service, and it's valued. And so now the customers actually sell it. They talk to each other, and it's, like, it's not even like that. So, so now it's, it would come to a point where we had to have a little bit of both. But now, so now, if you want to do questions and answers, I'll uh, we do some quick Q and A. It's a you're a really good presenter. Thank you. You're really Thank you. good at this. Um, is there anything about <clears throat> this market specifically? You've been in New York, uh, you at least with college and Lexington, but um, you at least have exposure to that. But is there anything about our market that makes your business work that it wouldn't necessarily um, in those markets or? Um, Great question. It works a hundred times more in this area than it does in a larger city. Why, why is that? We're in, rural, we're in a rural part of the United States um, that is very, very spaced out. Uh, we have factories that are out in Roberts, Kentucky, who individuals don't want to travel to. We have companies, really, they're just spaced out all over, is what it comes down to. 
And so it's very, very inconvenient for them to have to travel anywhere from 20 to 40 miles to be able to just have a drug screen done or anything like that. It's, it's very inconvenient. I mean, you're talking 40, 20, you know, it's 20 to 40 minutes one way. You know, that, that's a lot of soft cost involved because right. now I've got a supervisor and I'm paying $20 an hour plus benefits. I'm paying the employee how much. Now I've got to be in, sitting in a, a clinic or a waiting room for however long. It's just inconvenient. Uh, that, that, that's what it is. So that, that's a great question. So what we want to do is say, let's take the service to them on their time. Like we've got some companies, when I say on their time, I, I really mean on their time. Peabody Energy is one of our clients. Peabody Energy will have us go to some, uh, some coal mines in Illinois, some coal mines in central Indiana, and they'll say, we need you to do 150 randoms at 9 o'clock at night, or we need you to do 150 randoms at 3 a.m. We're there. We're there. So which we, we want to make it just as convenient and simple. I think a lot of businesses try and get too spread out and too complex when you can really narrow something down and make it very, very easy for the for the customer. Mm -hmm. So kind of tying in with that, where are you physically? Like you spread out. Yeah. We only have one physical location. That's in Henderson. But where do you where do you travel? We travel to? from Washington. And where Indiana. would you travel to? I guess is the. I'll one. travel. I mean, where you want to pay me? <laughs> uh, uh, I've had that question asked me if I would take a hundred road tests on the plane and go to Arkansas, uh, but we didn't do that. So. Um, Washington, Indiana is about where we're going to work <laughs> uh, We're going to Hopkinsville, Kentucky now. We have uh, some contracts that have signed there lately. Uh, we're not as far east as I'd like yet, but I'm not going to go any further in Louisville unless we have a central location there, and then to Paducah West. So Paducah and Kentucky, you know, like Southern Illinois. That so you do see that as something in the future that you plan to? What I would personally like to do, what we thought we were to going over our business plan, was to have a location in as far west as what we thought we would be, because then we could go another hour out uh, from that, you know, standpoint. The same north, south, and then east. I don't really foresee this business, and I nor do I really want it to, because. I enjoy the relationships I have with a lot of my employees and how we work together. And that is, I don't, not that I don't want it to get it big, I'd rather sell, sell it before it, it got too far because I think it takes a little bit away from the service aspect and the personalization once you get so large. I, I really don't. I don't think the service is near as good because you're not on a personal level. We don't have any automated systems. My cell phone is the 24-7 hotline that every company calls. Every single company calls me directly. I don't care what time of day, I don't care if it's Christmas. They call me directly. So everything goes through me. The reason I want that is- Is your wife on that? <laughs> and I just had a newborn two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, so, uh, but that's part of business. That's part of starting a business and growing a business. If you want to do it, then you've got to sacrifice. And, you know, but that's the fun part of it, too. That, that's the fun part. I agree with the, the cell phone. All my customers have my cell phone number. They, uh, my deal is text me or call me or, or email me, whatever it's convenient for you. The question I've got for you is, this has been very, very successful in the area that you've got. What would keep you from licensing another person like yourself in another area to expand that service and that network? Because I can see you not wanting to expand your own obligations because then you're not able to handle the, the customer volume but licensing it would be a good idea i've been asked there's been two things one is i've already been approached by deaconess clinic um, and uh, an occupational medicine type place that wanted to look into persons because they can take on a lot of volume and kind of turn this niche into an all-encompassing service and i understand where they're going with that that's not something i want to do but that's a very good point. That's been brought up to me actually before my business partner, before he died. He thought that's, that's the way that it would end up going. Would you would contact individuals, we would really put that out there and say, let's franchise it or something like that uh, and be able to do it that way. The thing that's so hard uh, personally is when you, and, and you're, so you're here as a business individual, when you build something and, and, and you go so many years of doing something, it's ingrained in you. You love it so much that you're so. I, it's, that's the one thing I guess that I'm afraid of is you service so many people and done it, and you feel like you have a great job. All of a sudden, you give it to somebody else, and are they going to take the same? You know, 
So you, you, don't you know what I'm saying? And don't then, pay attention to Yeah, them. and that's the kind of... Like you like you <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, they won't. Most people won't, yeah, but... Who are you hiring? What's the... What we do is we go through uh, Department of Transportation requires federal drug testing on all federal motor carrier, you know, railroad, all that, you know. So what we do is we follow uh, deal, Department of Transportation guidelines. So we go through what is called DASHA, it's the Drug and Alcohol Testing Industry Associated out of Washington, D.C. Uh, we go through that it's pretty much like a week-long uh, training course, if you will. They're sent, it's about a 300-page manual. So they have to learn all the regs on the Department of Transportation, all those sorts of things, how to test, if an individual can't use the restroom, you know, all of that. So they have to go through all that and then take a, an exam before they start to become uh, a technician and go out and collect. And where are you going? Where are you finding your people? Pretty much. Through a director? No, actually what I've done is I hired my office manager um, and then from there, we hired an individual that I knew and that's the one thing that I have found is it's not so much in service industries, I feel, it's uh, hire somebody that's very, very personable and can get the job done. You know, it's not so much of, uh, I've got this resume that's four pages and look at what I've done. Yeah. You know, because that doesn't necessarily <laughs> make you communicate. And to be in, in, in our industry, a lot of people very feel uncomfortable about using the restroom to, to begin with. So you really have to put people at ease, and so uh, communication is very, very valuable. Hmm. What is the level of uh, training that someone would need to do this? I mean, are you talking about like an RN, an LPN, or anything? No, I, anybody in this room, could, I, we could trust. So you can train me to do this if you train trust me to this. stick you with a needle. No, 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 it's no needle. There's no, no needle. Okay. We do not do blood testing. Okay. Everything is all your. But the reason we don't is because we follow all, no matter what test it is. We can do a range of tests from a, a rapid on-site test, which I can give you the result in three to five minutes. Or I can give you a lab-based result, which you'll get within two to five days. So we can do it you know, either way, however the company wants it. So with that being said, no matter what test it is, Every technician will treat it as a Department of Transportation test. That way we're following a standard guideline no matter what. Okay, a follow-up to that then, with expansion and growing your business, would it not be possible for you to find a key person as an employee, a well-paid employee, to let's say put them in Nashville to work out of that western Tennessee and let them proceed with all their testing? You can handle billing or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's still part of your company, right? and you have control over it, uh, rather than franchising as in, here's, you give me a fee and you can go do it, I'll just give you a business plan, you still have a connection. I don't disagree with that. The only problem I somewhat have with it is, I don't want to get it too out of range, mm -hmm. uh, to where I still, I like to communicate every Friday morning we have an employee meeting. Uh, the reason we do is because Every company changes. They change their HR director, they change their safety director. People move constantly in their careers. So we have different people who might have went to do a test at 3 a.m. And we have that meeting that Friday. They said, hey, Jerry no longer works there. We want to let everybody know. We all keep manuals in our bags. So everybody needs to change that contact. That's, that's no longer our reference anymore. They also want to start doing such and such testing. We put that in our notebooks. Those go in our bags. We have travel bags that go on site at every facility. So we want to stay organized in that way as well. Not to say I couldn't train somebody to do that. I guess that's what yeah. I'm saying is I could take somebody like you in in a different area. I could. He does what you do in each area, and then you two talk. Yeah. You don't need to know his customers particularly. I agree. Yes. You know, and and, and, and uh, a percentage of the business even. The uh, manufacturers association there, Hopkinsville, because they have how oh it's like twenty. Um, factories there all in one. Mm -hmm. What they're trying to do is they want to see if there's some way that they can get everybody on board. And I told them, uh, we, only, we only service two companies there now. The reason we do is, I mean, it takes us an, almost an hour and 15 minutes just to get there. And I told them, I don't want to give you something or a service that isn't truly us. And that's kind of what they're getting right now. They call, and yeah, it's still under two hours, but if they were more local, I mean, we're there in 30 or 45 minutes. So, you know, 
they get it, more people when they're closer get a lot better service. So once that happens, if I had enough, sure, I'm going to put somebody there. Mm -hmm. So and they can service the Hartsville, possible Nashville area as well. So all your employees, all your people are in this local area, so you can meet really readily on Friday mornings. Correct. Correct. Um, the other question I've got for you is on your database. I mean, why aren't you doing that part? Just just who to contact, what the company name is little notes on that person on some sort of a sales league program or something like that so it's in immediately updated everywhere on all their ipads well now everybody carries an ipad we've gotten to I the point through the phones too. <clears throat> yeah through the phones we could email each person no, and they could have it that way as well we're or, talking about doing basically a spreadsheet online even on google docs yeah and that way you don't automatically have everybody's name and information right that's there. a good idea i mean that'll keep it easy for you it's easy access for them they can look at it quickly before they go to the client they know exactly who what and where have notes you know i agree the, the, you know the biggest problem with me on that i'm you know, awful with technology you know, i'm so <laughs> old school that I mean, that is literally me, mm -hmm. and, and that's just that's who I am. That's kind of how I was raised. It is I don't need anything but a pen and a paper, and we can get the job done. But 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 see, I don't utilize technology the way I should. Yeah, I know someone that can help you with that. Well, then, <laughs> I, then I need to talk to that someone. I'd love to. I do love your idea about the pad in the meetings. Yeah, mm -hmm. and only carrying pad in the meetings. That's a I maintain that and use the automation software whenever it leaves me. <laughs> well, see, uh, my biggest thing too is I didn't used to recognize places when I walked in. Like to me, Brothers Barbecue has a great service or a great business. The reason they do to me is because when I first walked in, it was clean. As soon as I walked in, the second thing is I was greeted. <laughs> that, that's big because that doesn't happen anymore. There's no personalization. It, 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 nobody communicates anymore, and I have a problem with that. And so I think you can transition a lot of the things that you don't like necessarily that happen in your life and, and really put it to somebody that, that values those things. Because we've lost a lot of value in the world with all of that. Everything is, nothing's personal. You see people sitting at a dinner table and they text each other pretty much, might as well. So nothing, nothing's personal anymore. I did yeah. have an example of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right Last Wednesday, I missed our meeting because at 3:40 a.m. our time, I had to go to a meeting for Jasper, Indiana, and instead of she's got a point, was there a point? What I did was I actually opted just to talk to them and tell them what the information was, and that was received so well because we sat there and we just talked about what we did and how we were going to do it, and got their feedback. And that was more powerful than doing a PowerPoint saying, yeah. here's what we do. So you, you're dead on. I think you did great. Right. John, I want to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to cut me off. Thank you. Uh, 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 I want to rewind to your early days. Okay. You talked about, at, at the very beginning of your presentation, about you, you uh, underestimated, it sounds like pretty substantially, the need for cash on the front end. And you, you said that's one of the things that any would-be entrepreneur really needs to get. You mentioned a couple of investors. Um, fill in a little bit, and I'm not talking names, obviously, but fill in how you got from point A when you're going, whoa, I don't have enough cash, to how you found and developed the investors. Where Was there a banking component in there, too, that helped you bridge over? How did you get from A to B? Okay. Uh, when I first started, uh, started with a certain amount of money that I thought was what I needed, okay? That was first point, first and out of the gate, okay? And let me say this, as an individual, you need to learn how to budget yourself and personal finances before you ever go into business. Because if you don't, because <laughs> your level of spending needs to be minimal as an individual, personally, as a family before you ever go into business, because you're gonna be broke for a while. That's just it is what it is. Uh, that's fine. So, so to, but to go on that, so we got to a point to where um, we're, we're starting to grow. I, I'll go ahead, we'll go into figures. Our first year, we did $25,000 in gross sales. That's all we did, $25,000, okay? So I'm sitting there going, my goodness, this is not any money at all. Uh, but then my next year, we go into $85,000 in sales. And then the next year, we go into $190,000 in sales. And then the next year, we're $275,000 in sales. So and we're already projected to somewhere between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars this year. So the next problem was in year two when it jumped and the company doubled. 
Okay, company double, and I'm sitting here going, I don't have any money for this. And the reason I didn't have any money is because everybody needed the same level of service. Well, the only way they were going to get the same level of service is if every single technician had the same capacity to do the same level of service. Well, the only way that could happen is if I give them the means to do that, which means I've got to come up with capital to give them a, the amount of means to be able to go out and perform a job for my client. So now I'm sitting there going, I'm broke. The company has no money because we're not bringing enough in currently because of our receivables of how it's getting turned around. So now what do I do? Uh, believe me, I've, it's a, I'm a very believer in faith, and so... I'm walking down the street, this is no joke, and I'll run into this individual who I knew, but we weren't rural close. I knew, and I knew how successful he was from a money standpoint, if you will, uh, in business. And he asked me that question, and we sat down, and I had to give him a presentation. I had to tell him why this is going on, what we're doing, why the world needs it, and that, I mean, that's just how he is. And so once I laid that out, he said, this is what I give on evaluation of your company. This is what I'm willing to invest, and we're going to use this money and pour it all into the company, and we're going to explode. And that's what we did. Now, the next part, though, is this. So now that money had ran its course. You know, you just shot up, your company just doubled. That's great. Well, now all of a sudden, your company's getting ready to double again. Well, now what do you do? Well, now all of a sudden, you've got to go find a friend at a bank and say, hey, this is where we're at. This is what we're, we've done. And that's the very difficult part I found. I did go talk to some banks early. I decided not to go that route early because I never wanted to be in the point of owing before I ever started. That's, that's me personally. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to owe before I start uh, because I don't want the company. The company had no debt. The company actually to this day still has no debt. We found a way to, I mean, pinch pennies to where I have yet to use my credit line. But that's what I did. I went to the bank. Whenever, when you're successful, banks love you. You better go talk to them. <laughs> that's the truth. Go talk to them. As soon as you got the money and everything and all's going well, because that, guess what? Now all of a sudden they'll say, wow, this looks really good. You need a credit line. That's what you need. Okay. Because if things aren't going so well, now all of a sudden they're not going to turn around and say you need to. And I don't blame them. I don't blame banks. I wouldn't lend to somebody that doesn't have money. It just is what it is. So when you do, that's when you need to go ask for it because you always need that in reserve. We just haven't used it. Uh, last thing. I want to point on. All right. One minute. That's it. Good. Take care of your customers. How are you going to take care of your customers? I always think about that. I always think about the same one. I always talk about uh, being very personal. Uh, but just like this year, we're having a social function. It's not selling anything or anything else. We're having a casino ask card where we're bringing in all of our clients that ever worked with me from day one to now or anyone that still or is looking to, to work with us. Why? Is it going to cost a lot of money? You're dang right it is. Casino ask card and renting a room is not cheap. But if it wasn't for our clients, we wouldn't be in the position we're in. We just wouldn't be there. It allows them an opportunity to socialize, to talk to one another, especially because they're in the same field. And a lot of times they don't take the time to get out and just talk. They just don't. They don't have the time because they're too busy with work. So that's something that I would also uh, say to a lot of business owners is how you truly, you know, some restaurants, the only way they take care of their clients is you get a bed on the way out. I mean, you get crappy service and then you walk out and all of a sudden, here you go, you have a tooth pick in the bed. But, you know, that, that's the truth. So, uh, I mean, you know, look at it from a perspective. When you walk into businesses, how are they serving you? And then try and come up with an idea about how you can serve others. Very good. Thank you, John. We were pleased to have you. Uh, and thank you, doctors. <laughs> did, did that piece done that way, uh, the video piece, work for everybody? Yeah. I mean, do you feel like there can still be lessons learned even though the, uh, the presenters are from away? Very good. We'll look forward to seeing everybody next Wednesday, 7.30.